Dunlin is the most numerous small wading bird in Britain, often forming large flocks. From its mostly grey winter plumage, it undergoes quite a transformation in spring into its smart breeding colours. It's mid-April and I've come to this patch of salt marsh on the River Thames at Higham in South East England to wait for the mass arrival of a flock of Dunlin at this high tide roost. It's an amazing sight. At low tide, Dunlin forage on exposed mud along the River Thames. Continuously feeding, they consume worms, crustaceans and mollusks within the mud before high tide cuts off the supply. Just at the point when the last of the mud is covered by the tide, the arrival of Dunlin is imminent. I'm waiting for a Dunlin flock to arrive at any moment. There's up to 900 birds and they come flying down the Thames in a single mass, wheeling around as they approach. And I can see them coming now. In flight, the collective appearance of the flock resembles a cloud alternating between light and dark. This rapidly changing movement in a flock has evolved to make it difficult for predators to focus on an individual. See for yourself how difficult it is to follow any single bird. For the next few hours, while the tide is high, this is where the Dunlin will rest and sleep. Like other wading birds that feed on mudflats, Dunlin are not regulated by night and day. Instead, they lead their lives determined by the rhythms of the tide. When resting, it's always important to keep an eye open for danger. Undisturbed high tide roosts are just as important to birds like this as their feeding areas. When the tide comes in, these birds need somewhere to rest. High tide might be time to rest, but it's also an opportunity to do other things too. Bathing and preening is important for keeping feathers in good condition for flying. Oil is taken from the bird's preen gland and used to condition the feathers. In early spring, a variety of Dunlin plumages can be seen side by side, with some birds still in their winter colours and others in breeding plumage. Dunlin in breeding colours are on their way to nest in the far north, but birds that hatched last spring are still too young to breed. Dunlin is one of the commonest waders in Britain, but joining this flock is a bird that's much more scarce. Curlew sandpiper. There are small differences between this curlew sandpiper and the more abundant Dunlin. The slightly longer bill and fine rusty barring on the breast and belly drew my attention to this bird, which will be quite impressive when it's in full breeding plumage. The tide has gone out again now and the birds are feeding on the mud flats. It's quite amazing to be so close to them for so long, not an everyday experience. 